Okay, before actually looking at the physical interpretation of things, let's make the following very important warning. Okay, so the line integral of a scalar function or scalar field, okay, scalar function, uh, we'll say f of, let's just say x comma y. It could be x comma y comma z, all right? But the line integral of a scalar function um, and the line integral of a vector field, let's just go with a two-dimensional one again, so capital F arrow of x comma y. These are different, are different, okay? Just treat them like they're two completely different things. Is there a connection between them? Yeah, let's talk about that later though, right? So we've already talked about how to set up and compute line integrals of scalar functions. We have not even talked about how to set up and compute line integrals of vector fields yet. I mean, we introduce this up here, which is an outline of how to compute, but we haven't talked about what it really is. Let, but I, the best thing you can do is to not confuse them. Just for now, treat these as two completely different topics. There is a connection, but not now, right? Like, let's just treat these as two completely different things. Completely different. Line integral of a scalar function, line integral of a vector field, they're just different, right? Just keep it at that. Now, before we do some actual computations, let's actually answer what does the line integral over uh, the curve or the line or whatever, some par parameterized thing C, of vector field dot D vector R. What does this compute? Right? So let's... Uh, before we just dig into computations, which will feel a little too meaningless, let's let's talk about this. Once it's all set up, you're really integrating the dot product of two well vector things, right? And so, what what is it really doing? We're going to take a little sidestep into talking about a little bit of physics. Don't want to overdo it, but let's just talk about how in physics, um, in an algebra -based, algebra based physics class. Uh, people are introduced to the idea that work is equal to force uh, times distance. Now, a couple comments are in order. Um, is that the force that's being applied has to be constant. It needs to be a constant force. Okay. Um, the distance, it's got to be travel in a straight line. When, when work is introduced as force times distance like this. Also, a uh, key feature that's not um, usually described because it's, look, this work equals force times distance is true, but only in certain settings is maybe the way to say it, right? It's like close enough. It's like the right first approximation. Um, and so what what's so approximate about it? Uh, actually, it, it works perfectly if the following occurs. The force applied is in the same is in the same direction as the distance of travel distance of travel so let's say you know a a train is on um, some train tracks and the train moves that way and you push the train that way um, you know, you didn't like push this way. You, you literally push in the direction that the train is moving. That's when this formula is technically applicable. Yeah. So, um, oh, the example I have written down, let me just write about it. This is the, this formula could be used to, for instance, talk about computing the work done pushing a car in a straight line. For well, 20 meters, let's say. Okay, um, the thing is, the the car would need to be moving straight. So it's, you know, nobody's like at the driver control and has turned the 
the steering wheel so that the, the car keeps turning in circles or something. The car would be going straight. Now, that's fine. That's a good first way of trying to talk about work. But then what you can do later is say, well, what if the force applied is not always a constant? Is there a way to deal with that? And there is. What you do is you set up an integral um, from A to B of, let's say, capital F of X dx. And the point is right there, you can now have a non-constant force. Right? So in other words, like at time t, the force is f of x. So or at time x, I guess. At time x, the force is f of x. Okay. And then you know you have to travel. The travel still has to be in a straight line. So travel from say x equals a to x equals b in a straight line. Okay. Um, and one of the key constraints is the same issue that we saw just a moment ago that the force applied is in the same dir direction as the distance of travel. Okay, so for example, again, you might push a car, right? Might be the same general setup, push a car. But it's no longer just 20 meters where you might just be able to push the same the whole time. Now maybe you push a car in a straight line. Let's say for 500 miles. And that's, you know, if you do that, you're going to you're going to eventually apply less force, right? You're going to get tired. So maybe, you know, and a a function that sort of kind of mimics how much force you'd apply would be like 60, uh, what is it, newtons? Is that the units? You know, but minus 1 30th times x. So as x moves on, you keep chipping away kind of how much force you can apply because you're getting tired. Now, we want to, to undo this assumption. Okay, we'd like to now be in the setting where what if what if you don't want to talk about a situation when force applied is in the same direction as distance of travel? Because that's, you know, that's an assumption, right? So um, now you can say work is equal to in line integral over C of vector field dot dr, okay? So now um, the force is a vector field. Okay, so just remember at each point, let's say, let's just do this two dimensionally. Like at each point x, y, there's an arrow, there's a vector. Okay, so what is this capital F, you know, telling you, right? It's like at the point x, comma, y, whatever output vector, whatever vector you get as the output, that's the force at that spot. Okay, that's how much push is going on there. And then C is the path traveled. And the key point here is that unlike in the past where the force has to be in the same direction as the the direction of travel, so sh it should all be in a straight line earlier because we, we couldn't deal with anything else. Now we have the ability to, to, to travel along any path. So this does not need to be in a straight line. See, now it's just anything you can parameterize, okay? So now the idea is you could do things like compute. Um, so what would what would be your, your vector field or your force field, right? So it's like at every point, there's a certain amount of push going on. So you might address something like how much work is done by the currents on a lake's surface uh, to a drifting boat. So based on, um, you know, different spots on the lake might have, you know, the water might be being pushed in this direction versus that direction or 
more or less and then a boat just drifts based on um, all of the the currents on the lake and the boat doesn't have to drift in a straight line but now you could actually compute the work using this let's also take a look at a non-physics interpretation a a a, a non-physics based So all that up there was meant to try to help, even if you aren't in physics now or haven't been in physics for a while or whatever, that uh, I think, you know, talking about work and force and distance is a helpful, uh, you know, metaphor, analogy to, to do all this. But also, when possible, I think it's nice to just talk about this all completely geometrically. So I will try here. And what I'd like to do is uh, go actually um, I'm gonna go take some screenshots of uh, vector fields and I will paste them in I will be right back okay I went over to Wikipedia and just searched for vector field I took a screenshot and I just pasted the same vector field four times so just a reminder that um, the integral over C of the vector field dr right is it's I mean look even in its more written out form should we write yeah let's just do this right so integral t goes from a to b of the vector field composed with the um, parameterization written as a vector function that gets dotted with the derivative of the vector function dt okay so we will don't worry we're gonna dig into this a lot more and set this up in examples very very soon in the next part but I just want to even though we haven't done the computations themselves just like make some sense of what's going on physical interpretation wise with that dot right there it goes back to what we started with at the beginning um, just mentioning that remember that uh, it, when you have a dot product of two vectors, you know, two vectors whose angle created is acute will have a positive dot product, while two vectors, say this vector and that vector, where the angle created is obtuse, are those two would dot to a negative scalar. Okay, so the thing is, if you had this was your capital F, and then your curve C, you know. And the direction actually matters for this. Um, let's say you had a curve that looked like this. So it just basically follows along the current. So it starts here, ends there, travels in this direction. Then the value of you know, all or most of your dot products is going to be positive. So you add up a bunch of positive numbers. That overall value of the integral is going to be positive. Now, if you just traveled along that in reverse, you know this is gonna so the value of the integral yeah the value of the integral here um, so this is your curve C um, is going to be positive whereas here the value of your integral is going to be negative now you don't have to travel exactly along the current I mean the idea here is somehow to say that if this was all showing you how the water moves and let's just go with that boat thing again. The boat travels this way. Uh, the, the effect of the lake uh, and how the lake's water currents move the drifting boat, how, what was the work done in the end? It was some positive number. Whereas let's just imagine that I instead somebody started in their boat here and they, they had to paddle. They were paddling against the 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 current like just perfectly against the current at each moment like traveling literally 180 degrees opposite direction of where the current would want to take the boat so they really have to overpower the current of the water then to talk about what work did the did the lake do to the boat the work would actually be considered negative now you don't have to travel along the current so you could do things like this and if you travel like this I still think that at each moment like Right here, that vector, um, you know, the tangent vector to the path that you travel dotted with the vector that's right there, which looks to be like that vector, I think that creates an acute angle. So I, I, I would say that using this as C now, okay, there was C here. Now using C to be this path oriented this way, 
this integral should still be positive because the basically what you're doing here is in a sense computing you know how much of the time does your as you travel along the 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 curve c how often are you in agreement with the direction of the arrows versus how often are you not okay so maybe over here think of it like um you know imagine these are the quills of a porcupine i guess and if you travel along this way you you don't get hurt by the porcupine don't worry por porcupines the, the the quills don't actually hurt all that much if you do get poked by them but here you just don't even get poked by the the quills at all because you're moving in the direction you should if you travel you know for the second one when you travel in this direction you you pick up all of those porcupine um little needles right and this is maybe perhaps a little unsafe but you you're travel you're petting the porcupine in the appropriate manner and you don't get poked at all so that's why you have this still positive now for your interactive question i'd like you to estimate the line integral over the curve c i haven't drawn the curve yet that's what this last one's for okay um of the vector field well the vector field's drawn here okay dot d vector r where the curve c let me draw it it's actually the straight line that looks like this straight line segment so from starting to say from there ending down here what do you say about this what would be the value so you got to really think about what dot products are doing think about if you were to you know the, the you know think about the this this thing with the you know agreement of uh the arrows and see what you come up with